All right, let's do another review. This time we have Rebels Season 4, Episodes 3 and 4, In the Name of the Rebellion, Parts 1 and 2. So once again, we have a two-parter that we're on on the same night. I'm going to go through what I really liked about the episode. Remember, spoilers are ahead. First off, the most obvious thing is I love seeing Saw Gerrera. I love that they put him in Rebels. I love he appeared before on Geonosis. I'm glad that they brought him back. I think the dynamic between him and Mon Mothma is really interesting. And I think it's very necessary to the discussion, especially because the Rebels really did start out more peaceful. And when I say Rebels, I, I mean like the Rebel Alliance specifically. Obviously, Saw is a Rebel, but he's a lowercase r Rebel versus the uppercase r Rebel. Uh, a lot of people have pointed out how Saw isn't wrong. Not to go on meme idioms too much, but uh, that's what I kept thinking throughout both episodes. I just kept thinking, well, he's not wrong. But then he would go and he would do something that was wrong. His understanding of what the Empire is, his understanding of what's needed is pretty spot on, but his priorities and his ethics just aren't in place. You know, you would watch this and you would go, you know, if Saw and Mon Mothma could just work together, they would help each other get to the, the kind of middle ground they need to be in. Yes, you need to take action, but no, we don't just kill civilians, we're not the Empire. Where the Rebellion got strong is when we see Mon Mothma and Akbar work together. Admiral Akbar, both in Legends and in current canon, is more of the action we need to go, we need to do, we can't sit idly by when nothing happens kind of character. I mean, he's basically Saw, but he just cares a little bit more about collateral damage. And because of that, he and Mothma are able to see eye to eye. Uh, you see a lot of this in the, the Aftermath trilogy. Other thing I really like is Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma is a character I greatly enjoy, but I don't always agree with. Again, going back to the Aftermath trilogy, I loved her character and I loved her arc. She frustrated me because I wouldn't do what she's doing. She's not a poorly written character. It's not that she's making dumb decisions. It's she's making decisions I don't agree with. And that's part of what I really like about a character. So often in movies, I feel like I'm not agreeing with the person because they're being stupid. With Mothma, it's great to see a character I don't always agree with, but she's intelligent and it, it it's more engaging as an audience member for me and that's something I appreciate about her. The poll and something I said in the last uh, review, I love how much they're tying in stuff from the Clone Wars. And in this case, it's really with the Kyber Crystals. Now, I got excited about the Kyber Crystals a while back, well before Rogue One was out. There was an unreleased story arc from Star Wars The Clone Wars. It was called, I think it's Star Wars, uh, I think it's The Clone Wars Legacy is what the, the group is called. It's basically a collection of things that were supposed to be Clone Wars episodes that never made it. So in some cases they were adapted into a comic book series, which is where we get some stuff about Darth Maul. In some cases they were put into a novel, which is where we get Dark Disciple. In some cases nothing really happened to him. And in this case there's a story arc, what's called an animatic, which is uh, basically animation before all the really nice parts are put on it. So it's just character models that don't move really well and, and whatnot, but it was fully voiced by, by the amazing talent that worked on Star Wars The Clone Wars, where Anakin and Obi-Wan have to go to Otapau and they have to track down a missing artifact and there's like a dead Jedi that's involved. And it was a way to see Otapau before we see it in Revenge of the Sith. It was gonna be really exciting. Basically the Jedi find a giant kyber crystal and they don't know why somebody would steal a giant kyber crystal. And this is all the way back in the Clone Wars. I'm not sure if it was the Tarkin novel or if it was Catalyst. It was something James Luceno. We learned that the Geonosians and the Separatists in general were working on a Death Star also. So it was, it would make sense that they were also trying to find kyber crystals back then. I remember watching that animatic reel that was released, freaking out because saying that the crystals that were used in the Death Star, and we always knew that giant green crystals were used in the Death Star, you saw them in the Force Unleashed, were kyber crystals and that the Death Star was a giant lightsaber gun and I started freaking out and it was really great to see. And I liked that they were basically making a connection to a Clone Wars story arc that never aired. And I really appreciated that about this episode. I thought the humor in these sets of episodes were great. I like the, it's intense, we're gonna have a small, short comedic beat thing. It's why I like every Marvel Cinematic Universe movie that gets made. If you don't like stuff like that, you're not gonna like this. It's just style choice, it's not right or wrong. I really like seeing more of Sabine. After last season, I was really worried that we just weren't going to have Sabine at all. Instead, she's all over the place, and I thought that was great. I, I am not the biggest fan 
fan of Ezra Bridger, but I think he's being utilized properly. And I think Ezra is better with people to react off of or to have people react to Ezra. So he and Sabine as a team work really well, especially because he can just be there to screw everything up and then Sabine can fix it, which is usually how these things go. I also appreciate that his powers seem to be appropriately in check. I was concerned with his whole dark side arc that he was getting a little bit OP. Some of that's just the nature of the medium that we're in. Some of that is just I, the dark side is more raw power, I suppose. But I think they, they're ending strong on putting Ezra where he probably should be. Also, just implications in general, I thought this was really great. I, I just like seeing the pieces of the Rebellion come together. You know, in Legends, the Rebellion was always Mon Mothma, Bail Organa, Garmbel Elbis, or Ibis, or whatever the frick his name was. The guy with all the hair. They came together, and whether it was the version from the Force Unleashed or the version from the Thrawn trilogy, uh, they built the Rebellion, and it was like, these people came together around a table darn it, and made the rebellion. And it was a cool story, and I always appreciated it. It was kind of like a Knights of the Round Table Arthur... 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 It was a lot like the Knights of the Round Table, only instead of knights, it was rebels. The story that's being told in Rebels, I don't know that it's better, but it does make more sense. I think this is more how it would have actually happened if the galaxy far, far away was a real place and all of this stuff really happened. I think it would go down more where there would just be different factions that would come together. And I just, I like seeing that process come about. And then of course I was just really excited to see the Death Troopers on screen. I really liked their inclusion. I think it's a great way to tie it into Rogue One. And uh, they were just pretty, pretty darn deadly. So those are my thoughts on Rebels. Come discuss it with us at port-haven.com. We have all kinds of stuff. Anything you want to know about Star Wars, come discuss it with us there. Keep an eye on this channel for any kind of news or reviews that you may want to see. And uh, until next time, keep it real and fly casual.